Today we're here in Hong Kong speaking with female millennial entrepreneur Michelle Sun. Can you walk us through your journey from before you started the first Code Academy? Yeah, um, so I was born and raised here uh, in Hong Kong. Um, so I studied here till end of high school and I really wanted to leave this town and see the world. And I was also watching a lot of American drama and I thought, okay, I wanted to see the United States. And so I applied for college and so landed in Chicago and no idea what I wanted to major in. and. Um, started studying economics like most Asian students and um, I really liked the subject. Uh, it was combining math and which was my favorite subject in high school and humanities. It's really uh, seeing how how to make sense of um, society and economic forces and I graduated again had no idea what I wanted to do and I uh, went into banking because most of the economic students end up choosing um, this career path. Uh, it was a great learning experience, uh, lots of good training in my first job. Uh, I stayed there for three years and as a research analyst, so I was looking at equities um, stocks um, that are in the technology space. Mm -hmm. um, I felt really lucky in hindsight that I was placed into the team because I got a glimpse of how the technology world works. I was visiting big technology companies like Tencent and Alibaba, which is kind of like Facebook and Amazon or uh, the state uh, and China. And I was fascinated with these entrepreneurs uh, that came from you know really humble backgrounds and they change how the whole China interacts like how they communicate how they shop online and I started I found myself sort of reading technology news way more than finance news and I thought something has to change and the other thing that really triggered the, the, my change in career is uh, during the financial crisis in 2009 my team was slash from four people to half a person and uh, I was the half person left because I was placed into another team as well in addition to my um, original team and um, the hours was really long and um, but I was kind of used to it by then and um, until I caught the swine flu from my mom and oh dear <laughs> and i never really uh, it was it was quite a traumatic experience mm -hmm. with uh, three weeks in bed uh, quarantined and the most difficult part is that i was still quite conscious in my mind like i was still very active mentally but physically i was just so weak i remember leaving my bed and actually started panting like even before going to the bathroom and Hong Kong apartments are tiny. <laughs> so um, yeah, so I, I, when I was trapped in bed, I started thinking a lot about, you know, uh, you know, what was the meaning of life and asking all these questions, reading self-help books. And, and I realized I was just really unhappy in, in a job that I didn't connect very well. Um, so I started making some changes once I got back to work and making my health better. Um, so I started started helping friends startups and getting a taste of it and it triggered off this journey and first go really born out of uh, a hobby. So when I was working at, in San Francisco, I actually left Hong Kong to go to San Francisco to take a course to learn programming. Mm -hmm. So it was a boot camp uh, and teaches beginners how to code until it's um, up to the level that we're ready to take a junior development job. And so I did that and I was working in Silicon Valley and really like my eyes were open to a new world. And on the side I started teaching kids how to code because um, I thought why not? It's something that I know how to do and seems quite fun. Mm -hmm. And when I moved back to Hong Kong I realized there was nothing similar to that. And I 
thought to myself when I was in high school, middle school, computer science was never a subject that I would thought even existed, like to major in. And and I started as a side project from my from my with a full time job and wanted to just teach some students what I was teaching in Silicon Valley. And slowly the we grew the student base and uh, it became a full time endeavor. That's insane. That's so crazy, but so wonderful. So all of these things, isn't it interesting how different events in life can cause you to completely reassess your direction? Yeah. So the swine flu is actually a blessing in disguise. Oh, definitely. Yeah, in hindsight, I think it really changed. It forced me to question a lot of things that I was taking for granted and started to force myself to make choices for myself and be responsible for my decisions. Yeah, so did you have any, I mean, going from finance to teaching coding is, is, is quite a, a jump. So did you have any discomfort or fears in jumping from one subject to another like that? And if so, how did you deal with it or how are you dealing with it? Maybe it's something that's ongoing. Yeah, um, I think one of the main things, uh, maybe something that's quite related to my Asian culture, uh, one of the challenges is that my parents would chronically feel that I'm jobless. <laughs> it's like, oh, are you okay? Do you have enough food? Um, it's, you know, finance, apart from the traditional doctor's or lawyer's job, is one of the most uh, highly regarded jobs in a traditional families, including my family. And, you know, a job that pays well and, you know, relatively difficult to get into. Um, so I think kind of try, making that decision independent of their views was really difficult in the beginning because all my life I was just following a path, right? Uh, being a student, get good grades, get into the next grade, and then get into a good school, get into a good job, uh, get the most competitive job uh, out there. And now I, I kind of went the other way where I didn't want the most competitive job, but I wanted something that makes me most happy. And I think making that decision was tough and forced me to kind of have the faith that, you know, I'm making a choice for myself, not to please other people. Sure. And did you have like a mentor that was helping you at the time? Because it could be very difficult to go and, and make that kind of change all on your own, or did, was it just you? Um, yeah, I have a, a few mentors that um, I was seeking advice from. Uh, one of my mentors is uh, a CEO of a company that I was covering back at Goldman when I was uh, doing my stock analyst role, and um, he he was he's always been an operational uh, executive in um, companies like Mattel and uh, animation studios and. He has always been very encouraging in my path of exploring and um, defining my own happiness. Uh, but also, I, I, I find a lot of inspiration from reading books as well. Um, one of my favorite books is uh, Man's Search for Meaning uh, mm -hmm. by a guy named, uh, a doctor named uh, Victor Frankl. Um, mm -hmm. He was caught in the concentration camp and he was a very, he was like a thin, like nerdy doctor that survived like out of the odds where all the other stronger people didn't survive. And he wrote this book from the concentration camp. Wow. And um, I mean, I, my experience is nothing really, uh, nothing comparable to that. But I think if he can find meaning out of this darkness um, it really lends a lot of inspiration to daily lives like normal people how to live a meaningful life sure i'll have to look it up so i have to ask you now that you've chosen this separate path and you've been working on the first code academy do you feel that you're doing what you love and living the life you want to live um yeah most of the time yeah i feel very <laughs> lucky that i think there's definitely a lot of um work that is um you know, just a lot of hard work, um, and but all in all, I think most of the time I wake up and I I feel so thankful that I I'm able to interact with so many awesome students and teaching something. I love kids and I love technology, 
and I've always kind of separate the two. Mm -hmm. So I chose technology as a career and learned programming and got a job as a software engineer and was working in startups. And I usually volunteer my time to spend time with kids and thought it's like my weekend thing. And waking up these days to think that I can combine my weekend hobby as and my career is uh, is really a blessing.